That's for one. Well, it's that time again. Hello, everybody. Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in and watching. Wisdom in Golf, Golf WRX, uh, Perfect Imperfections. And um, I'm telling you, this Masters, that was, you know, we didn't have much of a chance to have a look, but uh, we were definitely listening on uh, Sirius XM on the way home on uh, yesterday afternoon. Yeah, it was unfortunate that. It was fell on the same weekend as Easter. Yes. Because <laughs> our family gatherings are no TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, being polite and everything. Yeah. You got to yeah. be, be with family. When you're with family, you be with family. Unless you're all watching the Masters at the same time, and we're the only golfers in the house, so what can yeah. you tell them? But we were keeping up with it. Big time. And, um, you know, there's obviously a lot to talk about. Um, one of the, as far as, what's going to help your game in there. Uh, two huge examples come to mind. Phil Mickelson. And that was really awesome to, to see his 65 in the final round and him knocking down a bunch of flag sticks on the back nine. I saw some of the replays. And um, especially, you know, and, and this is where you can really glean a lot of um, positive things from a person's interview in the press room. And uh, Phil's main theme was focus. And those are the things that he's working on with his brother right now um, on how to keep him, hey, when things, when the focus starts to wane, um, what do we do to get it to reel it back in, right? And so it doesn't stray too far away and then we can get it back in. And that's, Typically, what um, what meditation is all about, right? So you, you apply your meditation to a specific area, and then you'll obviously wane off of that. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you you know reel yourself back in, and then that's how you stay with your task. So. Um, Phil Mickelson's meditate, you know, is is obviously uh, getting better at meditating, mm -hmm. and that's what it's all about out on the golf course. And so, next time I hear Phil Mickelson say, uh, "You know, my focus is feeling pretty good," and and when he makes a comparison to Kiowa Island and uh, the PGA that he won, um, um, I I may throw a bit of money that way. <laughs> you know, I yeah. think that would be a, a really safe bet because. He said, he said it himself, it's not about technique. It's not about my swing. I haven't been working on my swing. Mm. So I've been working on my focus, mm. which leads me straight over to Jordan Spieth. And Jordan had a few loose swings, quote, unquote. Where do you think a loose swing comes from? And then he continues and he says, well, I had about fifth. I had about targets. I, I had my targets about fifty percent of the time. I wish it was a hundred percent. And I remember the days where you know in twenty fifteen where he said, "Small target, small mistake," and it was right. all about the target. Right. Now it's sometimes about the target. Yeah. What the heck happened? And don't you don't have to look very far to find a loose swing especially when the eyes are wandering in the back, you know, looking at where the, you know, if, if he's found these positions. Right. Talk about unplugging yourself from, you know, the task at hand. And how do you reorganize that? It's just, it's just too fast. So, yes, with practice and all that stuff, but, I mean, it's, there's still way too much going on. There's way too much to get distracted from. And that's where you'll get the loose cannons, Right. And that's where you just can't put your money on Jordan Spieth right now because there's still, it's still a liability on certain, certain shots. Yeah. And you just, you just don't know where it's going to come out. Which is so unfortunate because he's super talented. Like he could be winning so many more tournaments. A like lot. He just has a. He's, he's, he's basically playing with a hand tied behind his back right now. Mm -hmm. and, and that hand is his brain. 
right? Yeah. It's it's not about you know uh, a defect coming yeah. out of Jordan. It's about hey, what the heck was I thinking back there? W- w- what was my target? And when he says fifty percent of his targets, yeah, that's nice, dude. ouch. Well, fifty percent of his targets coming from somebody who was dead set on like small target, small mistake, right? So, like. When he doesn't have a target, what the heck is he thinking? Mm-hmm. Like, I'd like to know about that. It's like, what's occupying that mind space when there is no target? So you're telling me, okay, uh, we're going to hop in the car and we're on our way, yeah. right? Yeah. So let's say, you know, I'm, I'm picking you up somewhere, listener. And, um, you know, I show up at your house and you know it's me. And I'm saying, hey, come on, we're going for a drive. What's the first question you want to ask me? Where are we going? Exactly. That's the first question. Well, oh, it's Sean. Wow, that's pretty cool. Okay, where are we going? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm okay. We're going to go to your local golf course. We're going to hit some balls together. You go, oh, so as soon as I said that, you have a picture in your mind of where you're turning, where, where, what intersections are you turning. It's a light. It's a stop sign, whatever. You know exactly where we're going. And now we can go there. And if I say, hey, we're going to stop by at the coffee shop at the Starbucks and we'll grab a couple of coffees on the way. Well, that's you collecting my, the coffee on the way to the target, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Collecting the ball on the way to the target. Mm-hmm. So if I don't say anything and I'll say, hey, just hop in and you hop into the car, you're going to go, well, I wonder where we're going. And then I make a turn. You go, hmm, okay, so I guess we're not going there. And you go by process of elimination. And then when we get there, you go, oh, that's where we're going. Mm. You don't want to play golf that way. It's very simple. Mm-hmm. It's like we need to go there. Like what um, John Rom. you know, everybody's got a, a plan of attack. And John Rom says, in the last four holes, I need to be under par to win this tournament. Right? It's a lot of pressure putting yourself. No, it's a mission. Oh, okay. Right. It's right? Perspective, yeah. Whereas um, Kenny Perry, when he lost the Masters, he was leading by two after 16 and uh, made a nice birdie on 16, and off he goes. Got two holes left. He's two strokes in the lead. He's got the tournament in his grasp. And he bogeys 6, 17, and he bogeys 18, goes into a playoff and loses. Like one of the most heartbreaking, you know, scenarios you could imagine. So Rom, on the other hand, feels that, hey, if I'm three up, I got to go four up. Oh, okay. And now that I'm up, I have to finish these four holes under par to, to, to absolutely have this event. He's a good closer, yeah. Right? Yeah. So when you have that mindset, you say, okay, what do I need to do to make sure I'm under par in these four holes? Okay, so 15, I need to make birdie, which means the drive's got to be there. And then the second shot's got to be there, and we're going to take our two putts or whatever, and we, we got to make that birdie. So you're on a mission. 16's a birdie hole. So, okay, we got to make birdie on 16. i got to hit the ball there and let the slope bring it there. So I'm very specific about where I need to put the ball to make a birdie. Not, okay, I'm just going to go for the center of the green and, you know, hope I don't make a bogey. That's a very different mindset. Mm -hmm. So when you're on that mission, you say, this is what I want. This is what I need to do to win. All right, then the brain finds a way. And his brain found a way. And on 18, you know, he had a, a wayward tee shot. I think he was probably, he probably dropped his guard and hit that wayward tee shot and made, I think he made bogey on the last hole, didn't he? Or I'm did he sure. make a par? Did he get up and, up, get up and down for par? He, he had uh, four But I, I know, I remember hearing the tee shot on 18 and then my Sirius XM fried on me. Yeah. I lost mm-hmm. perception. Let me look it up right now. And um, yeah, thanks, Sav. Uh, but he did hit a wayward tee shot. He pulled it left. And uh, that tells me that he he kind of dropped his guard there at the end. He wasn't on his mission anymore. Right. So, um, and, th- and that's what you have to deal with, right? You d- you're dealing with your thoughts. You're dealing with distractions. You're dealing with the crowd. And, um, and finally, uh, 
you know, one of your students Moo, was saying how he really performed a lot better. Yeah, so we after our lessons, I gave him some homework to do, and then on the weekend, he had some range session, and he had his Mevo Plus there to kind of help him gauge the distances he was, you know, building upon. Yeah, we were working indoors all all winter. Yep, he's in Indiana, and then uh, he went out and he got some really good results with his you no know, seven iron carrying one seventy five to nice. 190, 180. And then his driver was where we worked on picking the height with with so his angle of attack was plus one. To, yep. to flat. And now he's seeing like eight degrees plus. Wow. So I was like, that's huge accomplishment. Yeah. And he's a very fast learner as I'm learning as a, you know, as a, as a teacher, right? So yep. he takes on to the wisdom and golf philosophy pretty fast. Yeah. Um, and he does pretty good with the drills. He, he understands what they're trying to help him do. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, in, those, in the process of that learning, he realized like when I'm focused on a target and I'm keeping the swing nice and easy. Um, especially when he picks a height. Yeah, especially when he picks a height. Even with the with the seven iron, like when he's swinging smooth and focused on a target, he said his there's no strain. Like, and he feels like his ceiling has gone up in terms of improvements. Like he feels like he can see himself getting uh, to the next level. Yes, sir. So he's uh, it's awesome yes, to kind sir. of experience that. When you start seeing that, people, it is so. I mean, you you just can't explain. Uh, it's it's like. Basically, being in the desert and figuring out where the oasis is, yeah, and then you make a beeline for it, yeah, and you know it's there. That's right, yeah. right. And you're on your way there, and you know it's there, and you're going, okay, I'm just gonna, I just need to negotiate. All right, don't don't get bit by the snake over here. Don't fall in that crevice, and just keep going toward the oasis. Yeah, and and that's you know, man on a mission. Yeah, and he's, he's or a woman on a mission. Or woman on a person on a mission. There you go. Yeah. So yeah, it validates what your what focus, right? Having the right focus, you know, helps you, you know, make the journey a lot smoother. Yes, yeah, yeah it's really cool. Um, you know, one of the things that we were talking about too. And, uh, so what was it, Sav? He pardoned. He pardoned. So he got up and down. Yeah. All right. Very cool. Um, uh, remember last podcast we were talking about shot clock. Hmm. Yeah, that's you right. Think, you think can't The lay? focus of a shot clock instead of a ball rollback? Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> and wouldn't a shot clock force someone to get focused in a hurry? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's not like, you know, like all the complaints for Patrick Cantley. Yeah. I, I wouldn't want to be in his shoes right now, and there's no excuse for it. But it's not an enforced rule. Yeah. So it's the Masters. Mm-hmm. He's in the next to last group, and he's he's going to do what he can to win the Masters, and nobody's penalizing him for slow play. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So why would he change, right? And you're talking about how kids watch that and then... Oh, and my gosh. It's like, oh, this is yeah. okay. I can do that. All of the Patrick Cantlay fans out there, please don't do what he does. Yeah. I mean, it's... I'm sorry, but when you're taking five minutes on a putt, that's highway robbery. And I'm sure that Kepka got affected big time by that because he's a fast player. He's a mm-hmm. very decisive player. Yeah. And it's when it's like when life is passing you by and I mean that's just the biggest distraction there is mm-hmm. is time. Mm-hmm. Because when Cantley's robbing you of time, he's forcing a distraction upon you mm-hmm. illegally. In my view, right? He's breaking the law of golf. Mm-hmm. And um, I think he should be penalized big time for that one. Yeah, I think like they should, like, kind of like how the F1, like if they see it like an infraction, you just get served a penalty you yep. know, after mm-hmm. to kind of discourage that behavior in a way. To- oh, I mean, that behavior's got to go now. Like, Because forget- a lot of people had commented about it. It wasn't just like one or two people that were upset with it. It was like a lot of people. Well, yeah, <laughs> Victor Hovland walking down the fairway. As he's hitting, as Patrick's hitting his it's shot. Like it's like enough is enough, yeah. boy, you know, let's yeah. go. And there's another video of Victor chipping onto the green and Patrick was still walking down the fairway. I hadn't even crossed the bridge up to the green yet. And Victor's okay. already, <laughs> Victor's already How playing. How does that happen? Shot. Yeah, that's just like, Very whoa. Suspect. That's whoa. And he's not. He didn't get the. He, obviously, he didn't get the message. Yeah, like, yeah, it's true. Where's the marshal? Like, to tell him to pick it That's up. That's it. 
I mean, when that happened to me, uh, uh, we've, we've talked about this in a past podcast, but it's worth repeating. Uh, the person I was playing with was progressively getting slower as the round was going on, and we were just starting. And I, we got out of position after hole four. Damn. I mean, we, we, and the, they, the group ahead was left leaving us in the dust. They were two holes ahead of us. So I called in the marshal. I'm going, Marshall, can you please put us on the clock? And Marshall looks at me crazy. He says, what, what do you mean you want me to put you on the clock? He, you, marshals never get that request. Yeah. Mm. Because you're being penalized. I'm going, I don't care. If, I, if this continues, it's over for me. Right. Yeah, it's yeah. over regardless. Right? It's over regardless. <laughs> yeah. And that that's what put Brooks Kepka in that position. I know it. Yeah. It oh, is sure. impossible that that did not affect him. Yeah. Because he was on a roll. Yeah. And and I think John Rahm going to multiple trips to the bathroom Help him helped reset. him stay in focus. Yeah, help him reset. And, mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And, and Brooks was just probably stewing in the corner going, yeah. what? is going on yeah like what is happening right now and and that when you get in that state it's over yeah it also puts like victor in a bad position too because victor's probably standing there like oh gosh i hope they don't think that it's me well victor shot 74 didn't he probably messed his internal clock too yeah. victor and kepka kept the shot 75 yeah victor shot 74 mm-hmm. that's cantley right there yeah, yeah. And because um, I've been in, I also have been in a group where literally on the first hole, mm. Marshall comes up to me, goes, just a heads up. She's a really slow player. So just make sure you guys keep an eye on your pace of play. And I was like, why would I do that? Pardon? That, yes. We're I mean, on the what? first hole and you're telling me to make sure like go talk to her. It's insane. Yeah, it's it really is. It's and just then, all you need is a damn shot clock. But then yeah. that's it. It was frustrating because then i felt like i automatically had to rush yeah. all of my stuff as like yep. a natural reaction to it because i don't want the people behind me to be like oh my, she's m- so slow my like, 25 I, I know my 25 second routine was down to 18 seconds 18 seconds and this guy was taking a minute and a half to two and a half minutes wow two and a half minutes on putts mm-hmm. about a minute and a half on chips and, and approach shots and over a minute on the driver wow. i'm going this is insane I can't play. Yeah. There's no way. Marshall, get over here. You know, let's yeah. put us on the clock. And then at one point, he has the gall to say, Marshall, I feel rushed. Mm-hmm. And Marshall says, dude, you just took a minute six on that last shot. Get your act together or, or go home. Yeah. I'm going, go home would be a good option right now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm yeah. sorry, guys, but that's it. Yeah. I mean, we, um, we have to put the pedal to the metal to get rid of slow play right now. How would it, you lay out the format for the timing for, like, say, tee shot, it's, shot? It's 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 laid out in the rules right now in in the etiquette. Okay, you got fifty seconds for if you're playing first. Okay, so you got an, an extra ten seconds to organize. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the group gets to the tee box. Yeah, and then boop, shot clock goes. Okay, right. Mm-hmm. So you got fifty seconds to, you know, grab your club, pick your target, mm-hmm. you know, and it's like. Dude, it's like you've played a practice round. You know what the hole is. You know what the mm-hmm. wind's doing. Yeah. On your way from the putting green, you're already organizing yourself mentally for the shot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it, mm-hmm. it's like that. Right. My best rounds are early in the morning when there's nobody in front of me and the greens are freshly mown. That's where I've had my best rounds of golf. That's where I shoot my 65s and 66s. Right. Because you don't. You're not thinking. Because I'm not, going. you know, it's, there's nobody in front of me. Mm-hmm. I got my rhythm. I'm playing at my pace. And we're, you know, there's two or three of us playing mm-hmm. and let's go. Yeah. And, and it's fantastic. And here they are. They're, they're twosomes and threesomes on tour. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. It's so they're, they're never playing in foursomes. No. Yeah. And they're taking six hours. Yeah. Like, come on, people. Because, you know, golf is, golf already consumes a huge part of your day. And then to feel like time is just passing you by even more, it's yeah. like, like the I, feeling of that in a tournament, it, yeah. it, and especially in a tournament when you're trying to do well and perform and, like, get a result, and there's a slow play issue, it's like, then that gets in your head, and then you don't want to be there, and then your result's oh, yeah. going to be bad, and then it's just a waste of your time, right? Yeah. It, it turns into a waste of your time yeah. and a waste of, like, it's, <laughs> your it's life. Like, but the thing mm. is, you know, like, 
it's got to be an annoyance because you're going, okay, are we done? Are we ready yet? Because usually on the first tee, they call you, Mm -hmm. and you're ready on the first tee, and if you're late for your tee time, you get penalized. Mm -hmm. But what if there's slow play right out of the gate on the first tee? Yeah. Yeah. That never happens. No. Right? So it's like, here's your tee time, let's go, and then all of a sudden it's hurry up and wait. So, I mean, that's... It's, um, it really is. It's, it's, uh, it's insanity itself. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's chaos. And you, you look at Rom, he goes to the bathroom, comes back, says, oh, I still can't play. What do I do now? Now he's, you know, you're yeah. thinking about what you're going to do next because yeah. you're blame. forced to wait right now. Yeah. Gives you to- too much time to think. Well, yeah. And too much thinking in golf is not. And, Not and the then right thing. When, when that when that rhythm's off, and then okay, it's it is time to play now. Okay, finally, all right. But then you still have that pent up anger, mm-hmm. yeah, just right? Frustration, yeah, you the frustration it. about ah, oh, come loose. on already, right? So when Victor Hovland starts walk, walking down the fairway yeah. while Cantley's still preparing his first shot, mm-hmm. it's it that's anger talking there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's you true. Know? Yeah, and when you're when you're angry and you got all that cortisol flowing through your body. Mm-hmm. That's not conducive to low scores. No, no, no. That's no. so. There we have it. There's the real problem. Yeah, we can't imitate that either. We can't make it worse. Mm-hmm. It's got it. You know, it's got to get better. Yeah. yeah, and I think the I think that you know Augusta National has gone ahead and done so many great things, so many incredible initiatives in the world of golf. This is where they need to. Hey. People, Next it's the Masters. Mm-hmm. There's only 80 of us playing. Only 80. 80. Mm-hmm. And then there's a cut. There's only 50 of them playing. Mm-hmm. There should be no waiting on any golf shot. Yeah, so especially true. in groups of like two or three. Right? Yeah. Exactly. There should be zero weight. Yeah. So it's shot clock, people. Yeah. And then you think you got volunteers? You got volunteers up the yin-yang with a Stopwatch going, okay, oh. I got your, I got yeah. your, uh, oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. official, uh, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, yeah. make my day, yeah. right, yeah, yeah. go ahead, throw the flag at that's it, it. Yeah. I got a flag, I got one here, right? <laughs> yeah, yellow flag, like a yeah. football, that's it, yeah. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> throw the flag it's up like, in the air, right, oh yeah, the commentator's like, oh, we got a yellow flag on mm-hmm. hole number three, yeah. we gotta go check that got out, a flag on the play, <laughs> yeah. there's a flag on the play, oh, I love it, yeah, that'd be exciting, that would be exciting, yeah, and it's got, yeah, it's, because right now it's stupid. We look ridiculous. Yeah. Right? What yeah. happened with Cantley? That's that makes us look stupid. Yeah. Like, come on, really? What's um what's your opinion on the walking interviews for something like the Masters? No. Because I know a couple of them were fine. Yeah. But then I think a couple of them it's gotta match the personality. Yeah. Right? I saw mm. Homa did one and he was fine. Yeah, but I think I heard something like about Tom Kim did one. He was great. Yeah, yeah. But I think they did one. With, was it JT? And he yeah, did. JT didn't like his, and Rory didn't like his. They both yeah. missed the cut. Right. Yeah, they both missed the cut. I just. It's I like don't it's know. in your head, right? I don't think yeah. I gotta do this thing, right? Oh um, yeah, I gotta, you know. And it's like yeah. you're in the middle it's of a con- round. It's really unfair. Yeah, it, it 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 breaks up. Yeah, I I'm not for it because it really breaks up. The um, you know, if you want, just give them a hot mic. Mm-hmm. It's like we're we're gonna turn on a, a mic at one at any given point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and then don't worry, we'll edit out the f's. Right, they right. Do, they do the we're NFL. not gonna use it mm-hmm. live. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're just gonna pop it in. Hey, let's have a th- th- here's an an interesting talk, and they can all do this in the booth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, it's a hot mic, but it's edited. Don't worry about it. You guys mm-hmm. go ahead and talk up a storm. I know, I know how you guys are. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll edit, we'll bleep out the uh, and edit out the stuff, but it'd be really interesting. I yeah. think it pulls people right out of their focus. Exactly. So yeah. just keep, just do your thing. We'll take care of the audio, and at one point, you know, and then you'll learn from it too because it, it, it's mm-hmm. it'll be in the back of your mind. You won't think about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That and, would be way better. Yeah, and I feel like it'd be a more natural kind of experience yeah. all around yeah. if it was just like a spur of the moment like kind of thing instead of a planned out interview kind of thing. Yeah. Because you would never, I mean, you don't see that. You wouldn't tell oh, it. And, and, like when, a, and when they get on there, there's like three of them 
asking yeah. you know rapid fire questions. Oh man, that's like uh, there's there's like I'm on a radio show at, in Toronto with uh, Naz and Wally, and bless their hearts. I mean, they got an hour to to pack in a bunch of stuff. Right. They go, Sean, we'd love to have you on the show, and it's nine forty, and then. You know, then it's nine forty five and I get on the show and then it's like rapid fire. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm I'm like they're rapid firing a, a, and they, they sound rushed yeah. asking me the question. And I'm going, oh, crap. <laughs> yeah. you know? and, and then I got to rush the, the answer out there. Yeah. And, and they're all trying to get in on a question. So a question each. You got Naz, you got Wally and they got Luke. Damn. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And. And that's what it sounds like. It reminds me of my my rapid fire interviews, and uh, you know, with those guys. Mm. And I'm going, man, it's like, come on, man. Well, you like nobody's going to get anything out of that. Well, yeah. you're like a talker, so it's I can see how it would be harder for you to do that. But well, I, you know, I'm going to rapid fire but out people there. People like but. the short, fast, especially for radio, right? Like it is depends on like the situation. Yeah, and that's that's why these podcasts are a lot better. Yeah, that Me. suits you better. <laughs> well, it suits a lot of people better, yeah. right? Because yeah. it's it's a normal conversation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But a lot of people do have a very short attention span. So Yeah. Well, hopefully you're driving to work, mm-hmm. everything's yeah. cool, and you're stuck in traffic and you got no other choice but mm-hmm. to listen to us, right? Because yeah. you would never <laughs> or have... Um, or a nice walk, yeah, a leisurely dog walk. Walking the dog, yes. Yeah. But like in other, any other sport, you wouldn't ask like a tennis player to... To be mic'd up in the middle of their in the middle of their yeah, rallies. It's it's, it's um, the flow of focus is everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, talk about a flow the, the 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 example that I like the most, Mike Weir coveting the Canadian Open. Like he got after the Masters, after his major, he wanted the Canadian Open the most. Right. Yeah. No Canadian has ever won the Canadian Open since the nineteen fifty two, since Pat Fletcher. Yeah, it's a long time. So, here's Mike leading the tournament, doing great, getting off ten, going to eleven, super focused. Got three three shots in the lead. He's ahead of VJ, and he's in the zone. Like we, like I've seen him in the zone, and I'm going, okay, this is great. We're doing great. And then I'm going, and then something happens. And all of a sudden, he starts losing, you know, sh- one shot after that. It makes like three bogeys and four holes or something like that. And then one of my students who takes care of security there tells me the story about, a, uh, a, um, you know, a patron who's drunk as a skunk, wrapping himself around Mike Weir going, I love you, man, right? Mm-hmm. And wraps himself around them, and they both fall to the ground. And when you're in the zone, right? Yeah. And then so Rory comes up and, you know, the expectations for the Masters are through the roof. And he's working his butt off with Bob Rotella, you know, and he's, okay, I'm firing. I'm no expectations. I feel relaxed. Everything's, all the cylinders are firing. And, uh, and, he, and he comes off, you know, he's coming off some really solid golf. And um, misses the cut. He's played well at the Masters. He's been in the final group at the Masters. It's not like he doesn't know the golf course and he doesn't play well there. And for Rory to miss the cut, he's from Northern Ireland. He's seen weather. It's not a big deal. Mm. Yeah. Um, that's him out of his element. I mean, he's not um, – it's, it's not it's well all, positioned. It's not all there right now. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. it's really unfair that they – yeah, the put that on it, there's oh, too man. much break in the focus pattern there where yeah. you, 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 you have to prepare for that. Well, especially for a tournament like the Masters, like of yeah. all the tournaments. Like you got millions of people listening right there. Yeah. And, you you know, you want to do a good job for them. So you got to take away from what you're doing. Yeah. And when you do that, you know, like Bubba Watson was has been misunderstood heavily in that department. Um, if he's comfortable and he's hyper focused, he plays extremely well. Mm-hmm. But when he's distracted and he's on a mission and you're distracting him, he gets frazzled. Absolutely irate. Yeah, like that's where you're going to see the bad side of Bubba Watson. Right. Tom Weisskopf was that way. Lee Trevino was that way. I mean, you know, you didn't want to get on the bad side of one of those guys. Mm-hmm. 
And um, it, it takes a rare individual to, to not go off in a situation like that. Mm. And Rory is a polite individual, and he's calculated in his approach that way. And uh, I commend him for that. I think the, the guy who was the real pro at that was Nick Price. Nick Price, if you ask anyone, they'll tell you he's the nicest guy on the planet. And uh, one of my one of my professional friends learned firsthand how that works mm. when he had a pass in the clubhouse mm. and goes to the men's room. He's unzipped and he's taken his you know leak, mm -hmm. and Nick Price walks in right next to him in the stall adjacent, and it you know and go oh that's Nick Price right, and so he and Nick are having a moment. And he's not saying a word. And while they're having their moment, somebody taps Nick Price on the shoulder. Said, Nick Price, man, you're awesome. Can I have your autograph? As he's as he's taking doing beating. his deed, you know, doing his deed. Yeah. And to me, like my reaction, could you imagine what your reaction would be to that? Could you imagine what, you know, it's like, what are you doing, man? Yeah. And the answer to Nick Price from Nick Price was, it would be my pleasure. If you'll let me wash my hands, I'll meet you outside the restroom and I'll be glad to oblige. Wow. Mic drop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like that's world-class patience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's not something that you would get from, you know, 80% of the field. No. Mm. It's like, what are you doing in here? Can't you see I'm busy, I can't see, right? I can see Brooks Kepka be. Oh, my God. Could you <laughs> imagine situation. if that happened to Brooks? <laughs> <laughs> I think he'd just turn around and, you know, finish somewhere else. I, I think you'd give him a side eye and, and get the message. You know? yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's a weird place to ask for an autograph. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, I mean, when people are starstruck, I mean, they, they, they don't realize what they do. Mm. True. And Nick, Nick Price recognizes that. And uh, it's, it's a different world out there. So... Um, everybody comes from a different place when, when they're on a mission and everybody reacts differently when they're distracted. Yeah. So for them, it's all about distraction management. Mm. And uh, I think the worst distraction out there is slow play. It's got to be. Yeah. It's pretty because weird. when, you know, like uh, when somebody says, um, I, you know, I'm trying not to think of anything. You know, when they're, they're overloaded over their shots and then they're trying to not think of anything, that's when the distractions pour in. If you want distractions, try thinking of nothing. Mm -hmm. The first sound that comes into your ear, you'll be distracted by. Yeah. But if you say, hey, you know what? I'm going to stand here. And I'm going to hit this shot right here. And this shot is going to do that. And I'm going to go there. And I'm going to, this, now I'm going to let momentum release in that direction. It's going to sound like this. It's going to feel like this. It's going to look like this. Now you're immersed in what you want. And you're in the process of delivering. That's when not too many things are going to distract you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when time forces you to pause... And stand there and do nothing. It's like a beehive over your head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's and I think that is the worst thing that another player could inflict upon another player. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is force them to wait. Yeah. When you have a job and your job is to execute within a certain amount of time. But because they're not enforced, they take liberties and they go, well, I was distracted with some fans, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And, and they, can, they can use any excuse they want. Mm -hmm. But when it's, hey, I don't care. You got 40 seconds. And it's the rub of the green. Mm -hmm. And the rub of the green, people, is something that has been used for since golf has began. In gamesmanship, you know, when you have a, hey, you hit a shot and it hits a sprinkler head and it bounces into the hazard, the rub of the green. Yeah. Hits a tree and goes into the hole, rub of the green. Mm. It can go both ways. So it's the shot clock. And if you don't get a fan screaming at you within that time, good on you, the rub of the green. 
Right. Mm. But if some, you know, if a toddler runs out and whatever, as, as long as you're not putting anybody in jeopardy, you know, I'm sure there's going to be a couple of clauses in there. But it's like, hey, the clock was on. He ran way past 40 seconds. He took a minute and a half. And he wasn't being distracted, and the fans weren't. In, were, the, the, there was no, you know, implication. I left. I, my flag was up, and that was a second flag. So now he's got a two-stroke penalty. Well, two strokes is a lot of money when first place is three point six million. That's true, right? What was that? What was the first place in the, uh, prize for Masters? It's got to be more than that now. It was three point something. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's uh, it's like a PGA Tour. High level event, mm-hmm. so there's there's well over a million dollars between first and second place, mm-hmm. and if you get penalized two strokes, you go from first place to fourth place, right? Or yeah. first place to third place. It's an expensive, and penalty. that costs you two million dollars. Yeah. yeah. Ah, well, too bad. Yeah, it's a hard lesson to learn, right? Yeah, yep. that's it, man. Yep. There it is. That's where we need to go. It's uh, a yeah. flag on the play and then a <laughs> yellow card for your first uh, infraction and a red card. <laughs> right, <laughs> red card. Yeah, I wonder what a red card would be for like, disqualification. For, yeah, I guess so, yeah. DQ. DQ, yeah. And what's the problem? There is no problem. Mm. What happens in a in a basketball game when the the clock runs out? What happens? Uh, like the shot clock? Yeah. Oh, the, the, the they they lose possession. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, they lose possession and it goes back to the yeah, so. There we go. Yeah, and and what happens when they do that too often? Is there another penalty, or they just lose? Oh, possession? They, I think they probably just get like a warning or technical, so a like, technical yeah, foul, yeah, technical to the team or to the coach, something like that. Right. Um. They, yeah, usually, and then they, the other team gets a free shot. Right. Yeah. So, so it's going to cost them. Yeah, it's going to cost them. Yeah. So there it is. I yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure something that's something I have to mull over. And, and they're doing about. that in baseball now too for the pitcher, right? That's it. Yeah, I think it's going to really speed up the game a lot better. And like that's it. Baseball Fo- takes football's forever. a given. Yeah. You can't. You can't. Ha- you know, have a team wait. Yeah. No, right. Yeah, so sure. why would you have Brooks Kepka wait mm-hmm. or John Rom wait? I'm sorry, yeah. Yeah. they have a team too. Yeah, I wonder how it's going to affect because everyone's a different internal clock in terms of you know how they make their decisions Just and routine. Adapt. The, but yeah, you, you can adapt easily within those we parameters. Are. We're adaptation tools. Yeah, absolutely. And um, you know, we, we can't take more than a day to play a game of golf. No, nobody be playing. No, so yeah. there's nobody. Nobody would play this game. Yeah. So um, as far as the being good for the game of golf, I think it would be the greatest thing that would ever happen to golf mm. is shot clock. Yeah, I think it would add, an, add another extra dimension to it. To, yep. to, yeah. to make it more interesting. So, uh, and and if if that were to, oh man, I tell you, local events, it would be so much fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it's like, beep. Mm-hmm. You're on the clock. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. And beep. Ah. Yeah. You're over time. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. It's like penalty or warning or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you get right? a warning, yeah. Could you imagine now you have leverage against those people? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You people. <laughs> yeah. That's what you are. You are those people. The I'm two, sorry, but that's it. The two things that will push people away from the game of golf is, yeah, would, one, the ball rollback. That will push people away from the game. Yep. And, two, not enforcing a shot clock for slow play or not handling slow play. You know people just play don't play properly. golf because it takes too long. It takes too long. Yeah. It's true. It, it would, takes too long. It would definitely weed out the ones that. The golf courses are losing money. Hey, yeah. we have a six-month window here in, in Canada, right? And then in, in the northern U.S. You have a six-month window. you got to make hay while the sun shines. True. Yeah. And if you got slow play every day and people are not getting off the golf course fast enough and people are going, hey, I want my money back because I'm just i not playing golf right now. Yeah. So if I'm not playing golf, whose fault is that? That's your fault. That's your management. You're not getting people and through here. I've been in the – on the receiving end of that as um, customer service at a golf course. I worked at a golf course um, in the pro shop while I was at school. And it was a little municipal public course. And this group came in um, afternoon time. And, you know, they were one of those groups that were going to be drinking and having a a ball. (laughs) 
And I said, well, do you want 18 or nine holes? I said, you could pay for nine now and pay for nine later if you decide to do the 18, or you pay the 18 up front and you get your round in. I told them that straight up. And I was there by myself. Mm -hmm. No manager, no associate. And they came back in and wanted a refund for the nine holes that they didn't play because they ran out of time. Right. I said, well, I don't have the access to give refunds. That's the manager. Right. It's it's like nine o'clock at night right now. Like I'm the only one there. I'm closing. And they, the, one of the guys in the group was drunk. Oh boy. Mad and frustrated that I couldn't give the refund. And I got, Lambasted. Plastered. And I'm there as a 120-pound oh. teenage girl with irate men wanting a refund because they couldn't get their you-know-what together to finish their round on time when I gave them the option ahead of time. That is not a fun place to be in. And I was shaking. I was physically shaking on yeah. the phone with my manager, and my manager wasn't giving me any help because she was like, well, sorry, they didn't do it, so I'm not giving a refund either. And I'm like, you do understand that I'm here by myself with angry men <laughs> who it's want their safe. money back. Yeah, it's not safe. No, I would have given them money back, and then I would have said I quit. I needed the code, though. I needed the access code for the uh, Interact machine, and she wouldn't give it to me. So I literally could not give them any money back. And what happened after that? They left? One of the guys tried to calm one of them, the guy down, and they ended up leaving. But I'm like, I'm by myself, 9 o'clock at night in a parking lot with no lights on. Yeah, and then you'll never see them again, right? They'll never come back to that golf course, A. And B, you you will never go back to work there. No, after that incident, I was like, I am never closing here by myself. You will have somebody stay with me. For closing because this is not safe and the golf course wasn't in like a very well populated area either it was like on the outskirts of kingston no lights in the parking lot no houses around yeah no that's oh that's that was... yeah no that's that's nasty yeah yeah that that should never you should never be put in that position and that came from slow play yeah that's uh Okay, so <laughs> there you have it. Yeah. Pick up your socks right freaking now, or I'm coming over. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. Very cool. So you guys are heading out to Hope Sound. Yeah, sure are. And um, it's going to be. Uh, have you guys checked the weather yet over there? It might rain. Yeah, there's a chance of rain. Okay. Unfortunately, on on was it Saturday? All three days, actually. All three days. No. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to so let me might, check their percentage right now. Oh, that would not be nice. If it's under 40%, then I won't acknowledge it. Yeah, in Florida, yeah. too, it, it stuff the, the weather changes very often, so I'm not too, too worried. But as of right now, it's not looking super great. Like, Sunday is 90% storms. Oh, boy. Okay. And Friday is 60% storms, and Saturday is 40% storms. Well, hopefully okay. that'll change between now and then. Thursday right. is also 90% storms. Yikes, really? Yeah. In um, Hope Sound and in Orlando for the first couple of days. Yeah. It should be not good timing. Well, at least you have a cover to hit balls at uh, Jimmy's place. That's true. I'm yeah. excited to see Jimmy's setup and say hello yeah, to Yeah, Jim, Jimmy has this gorgeous setup in, uh, in Claremont, the yeah. Claremont National. So check out ClaremontNational.com. And uh, he's got a beautiful top tracer range with a cover and, you know, amazing targets. And, you know, the nightlife is amazing. They've got a great restaurant there. So, you know, make it an afternoon or an evening and, uh, and go check that out. It's the best view of Orlando. Can you imagine? Mm-hmm. There is actually a view of Orlando mm-hmm. from higher ground That's in cool. Florida. That. That was news to me. <laughs> so um, so yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing Jimmy there next time. I think uh, we're definitely going to stop by his place uh, at the next PGA show. Right. So looking forward to that big time. Mm. 
So say hey to Jimmy, and and it's I, I don't know if Jimmy's going to be there, but obviously his son's going to be there. Mm. Okay. And um, so it'll be a, I think it'll be a, a really cool trip for you guys. So yeah. let's so let's keep our fingers crossed for weather. Yeah. And hopefully um, you'll get it in. Meanwhile, if it's going to be soggy with a lot of rain at a polo field. Yeah. Uh, looks it's like be all carry. It's going to be all carry. <laughs> yeah. And Sav, that 14 degrees angle of attack is going to come in real handy. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully the wind's yeah. going to be. Yeah. Right? If it's wet. I hope that there's at least a back, like a tail, like a back wind. <laughs> so yeah, a little tailwind. Little tailwind. It, 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 you know, if it, what is it, where is it facing? It's going to be facing the, uh, away from the water. Away from the water, yeah. Right. Away from the water. Okay, yeah. so you may, you may get uh, uh, an ocean breeze there, but if the system's coming in from the west, you probably won't. You'll probably Ooh, be hitting yeah. into the wind. Yeah, so it's going to so be a So soggy st- and into the wind? Yeah, a little stingers. That will be, be the play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that's going to be uh, an interesting distance, uh, on on that particular trip, but it's going to be very different from the following trip in in uh, uh, no, Colorado. In Colorado, yeah. Mm-hmm. Ooh, I can't wait yeah. for that one. Yeah, that, that one's going to be interesting. Probably going to see a few few big balls there. Yeah. It's, uh, yes, and uh, probably see someone go f- over five hundred. Mm-hmm. At the well, it's it's a sod farm, right? Yeah. So well, uh, it was pretty much almost five hundred. Bigfoot, the last time Bigfoot they were sod there. farm. Yeah. So it'll be. Uh, yeah. That'll be fun. Yeah, right on. Okay. Well, we'll leave it at that. Wish the two of you the best of luck. Thanks. Thank you. And um, I'll be headed to um, uh, Mexico in the last week uh, for the Mexico Open again. Mm-hmm. And um, and then uh, after that, I may be swinging by. Uh, it'll, it'll either be Texas or L.A. <laughs> and so um, we'll, we'll keep you posted on that. Yep. So all the best, you guys. Enjoy the rest of your week and uh, the post- uh, Augusta festivities for John mm-hmm. Rom. Yeah. And uh, we'll see you next week. All the best. Take care.